My name is uh, Hubert Vo, and uh, I'm a state representative of District 149 out of Houston. Okay, um, you're the first and only uh, state representative who are Vietnamese American. Can you tell us uh, what is it like? Well, it's not so much about being the first one or the only uh, Vietnamese American uh, state representative uh, nationally, but I see myself as a person who uh, wants to give back to the community and who wants to uh, help uh, uh, the district that I represent, which is uh, the district, uh, part of the district is in Houston. Um, your district, uh, number 149, in Harris County has only about 10% of the Vietnamese American who are registered voter, correct? Um, but yet you're elected as the representative. And um, can you tell us why the people in your district voted for you since there's only 10% of, of us are Vietnamese American registered voters? I have lived in my district for over 30 years and uh, I grew up in the area. I have business in the area. All my brothers and sisters went to school in the area. So we pretty much uh, very established uh, in the area. So I myself, before I ran, I, I, uh, I was involved with different organizations in the district, uh, participated in different events in the district. So the people in the district uh, actually uh, know me real well. So um, with your family and you particularly uh, involved a lot with the community, uh, in your district, um, you don't feel uh, there is uh, there's there's any uh, uh, challenges that you face um, as a Vietnamese American. I don't see any challenges as being a Vietnamese American. Uh, when we first came here to America, uh, you know we didn't speak the language. We didn't know our new friends, but uh, fortunately. Uh, the people here open their arms uh, to us and offer us compassion, equality, and opportunity to work hard. And, and with that opportunity, we work hard. Uh, my parents raised the family and uh, sent us to school. And uh, uh, today we are, uh, we are where we want to be. So we are very happy with that. We're very fortunate to to have the open arms of the people here, and this is uh, one way that uh, for us to give back to this great community and this great country. Um, what is your role as a state representative in the House of Texas? Representing the people of district, uh, the district that I represent, and uh, make sure that their voice is heard. And uh, I'm very visible in the district and uh, working with different groups, with different uh, organizations. Uh, this is going to be my fifth term and I've been serving for eight years now. Uh, and uh, as a state representative, uh, working with the, my colleagues in the House, uh, I'm uh, very lucky that I have the reputation that uh, I'm working, uh, working across party lines, reaching out to uh, uh, my colleagues and make sure that uh, I get things done for the people in my in the district and I uh, I've been appointed to be a vice chair of the house committee of uh, small business and economic development also I'm uh, I'm serving on uh, the uh, house uh, insurance committee okay so you you just mentioned that you're uh, going on to your fifth term Yes. Um, um, how do you compare with the first time that you're elected here? Uh, this is a joke that uh, my colleague always uh, say it on the floor. They say when it comes to the first term, uh, during the first time they look around and they say, they, they talk to themselves, they say, how do I get to be here, you know? And later on, starting the second term, they say, how did they get to get? Uh, how how did they become to get here? You know, so they ask themselves, well, how did those people get here? So that's the joke going around uh, 
uh, on the house floor. So you must like. Uh, I learn a lot. Very much. I, I learn a lot. Let, let's say this: uh, the the uh, I uh, I gain a lot of. Uh, uh, I was able to to make a lot of friends, know many different people, uh, different agencies, and work with a lot of different people. And I have learned. Uh, we have learned from each other. Mm, can you share with us the challenges that you face and what challenged you the most as a state representative? As a state representative, some, sometimes you have to travel. Uh, you, uh, you will be away from your family a whole lot, so those are the challenges. Uh, it, it's the sacrifice uh, on your part uh, in terms of uh, uh, sacrificing your time for your business, sacrificing uh, your personal time, and. Uh, uh, sacrifice, uh, sacrificing the, your time with the family. So those are the challenges. But besides that, uh, it's very rewarding when you get things done for, the, uh, for, uh, for, for your district. Now, can you tell us uh, your best reward that you received for being a, a, a representative for housing? You know, every, every session, uh, if you're able to do something good for your district, in terms of uh, passing uh, legislation for your school district, or passing legislation for uh, to enhance uh, the uh, your district, or doing something good for the people of Texas, that's a big reward for me. So, can you give us an uh, an example, a few examples? Uh, in the past, I have uh, uh, passed legislation to uh, form and uh, what they call management district in district 149 allowing the portion of the district uh, the businesses uh, in the district to form like an association of management uh, district uh, for them to uh, consolidate the area and uh, first to beautify the area for and uh, to uh, deal with uh, public safety and also how to attract new businesses uh, to the area. Um, I used to live in Ailey, Houston, uh, okay. 15, 16 years ago. And I, I know that coming back from time to time, I see that the area has grown a lot. Right, and has changed a lot. Due to the businesses get together and the people, during my uh, uh, eight years serving uh, for the Ailey community, I was able to bring everybody together in the Elif area. Uh, the management districts working together with different communities. Uh, you know, Elif is a very diverse community. We have the Hispanic, the African American, the Asians, the Anglos, uh, and everybody else. So we're able to bring those communities together and we get the management district to work with the school district. We work with the businesses, to work with different local uh, government and make sure everybody work together to uh, to make the area coming back. So. Yes, because right now it's beautiful Yes, and I can see that uh, it is safer uh, when, when we travel back there. We really uh, get to embrace the area more, right. more so now than when we lived there. Uh, we didn't feel that safe. Right, I'm, I, and I'm very proud to see the people of District 149, they are embracing uh, one another and getting to work together. Uh, you know the Asian community is a large community uh, in the southwest part of Houston, and uh, we have the uh, Chinese, the Vietnamese, the uh, Indian, the Pakistani, but now we all work together uh, for the common good of, uh, of the community, so I'm very proud of that. And also we're reaching out to other communities also. In the past, 20 years ago, the, those communities never didn't, didn't want to sit down and work together or have, have some type of communication together, but now they all sit down together and have uh, working on, on, uh, together on certain projects. So I'm very proud of that. Um, you, also, you just mentioned that uh, in the uh, uh, southwest part of Houston, there are many uh, nationalities. There's Hispanic, Anglos, and Indians, and Chinese, and Vietnamese. 
um, how do you um, how do you communicate, let's say, to the Hispanic people? Because I know that a lot of them don't speak uh, English. Well, we always uh, uh, get some help from the leaders in the Hispanic community. Uh, as well as the African uh, community, get the leadership to get them involved uh, with everybody, and from there they will uh, uh, go back to the community and talk to the people in the community and be able to communicate that way and, and bring everybody out from the shell to make sure they come out and work together with everybody else. Okay. Um, can you? Share with us a little bit about your background, your personal background, uh, your journey uh, to the U.S., as well as when you came here, how you came here, at what age you were when you came here. I came here in 1975 with my parents by boat, and right after the fall of uh, uh, Saigon, South Vietnam, uh, we came here when I traveled with my parents. I uh, I was very hopeful that one one of these days I I will be able to come back and see my friends again in Vietnam. But unfortunately, it's been over 30 years now. I never uh, had the chance to go back to Vietnam yet, and and here I am, you know, growing here, growing up here, and and uh, uh, embrace my family here, having a family, embrace my kids here, is 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 quite a uh, an experience for me and. Uh, I'm always uh, very thankful uh, for this country that really uh, have opened their arms and embraced us. Um, how do you and your family start a new life uh, here in the U.S.? Uh, what challenges? And when we first came here, we didn't speak the language. We didn't have no jobs, no money. So uh, my parents, when they came here, my father asked me, uh, uh, of course I'm the oldest, so my father asked me, Hubert, I'm going to need your help to go to work and help me raise uh, your brothers and sisters, So, which I did. I uh, took the first job as a busboy at the restaurant, So, and after that uh, I, uh, I moved on to different jobs, and uh, three years later he asked me, Hubert, we are financially stable now, so uh, I want you to go back to school. So I did. I uh, I applied for uh, to go back to college, and finish, uh, and uh, was able to get a degree in mechanical engineering. Well, at what age were you when you first came here? Uh, I was 19 when I came here. You were 19. Right. So. Um, do you remember your trip? Uh, it was, it, it was uh, a very mixed uh, feeling uh, uh, when I uh, traveled, when I left Vietnam, came by boat. We were uh, on the sea for, uh, I believe, for almost 10 days. Uh, first, uh, we want, uh, first, my parents and some other, uh, uh, some of his friends decided to go to Australia. But uh, I don't know what makes them decide to come back and go uh, headed back to the Philippines. And, and we end up in, in the Philippines and end up in the, uh, uh, in the Navy, uh, in the U.S. Navy fleet. And we stay in the Philippines in the uh, refugee camp uh, called Subic Bay. And then uh, the U.S. took us in. So we were flown to... Uh, different islands and uh, in the refugee camps uh, 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 on different islands. And then we flew into uh, uh, to inland and we stay at uh, Fort Chaffee in Little Rock, Arkansas, uh, uh, until my family got sponsored by a church in Lubbock, Texas. So we end up in Lubbock. It was our first uh, uh, stop. It was uh, in Lubbock, Texas. I mean, on the boat, we uh, uh, were afraid of, uh, uh, of, of of pirates at sea, and uh, you know, we everybody has to be on guard. You know, making sure that 
uh, we're all prepared to fight in case uh, we run to pirates. Uh, but uh, it, the journey was pretty much, uh, 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 we were very lucky that the journey was very much uh, calm and, and no incidents at all. Uh, we were short of, uh, of food, so we have to ration our food. Uh, it, it was a small boat and almost 100 people on the boat by the time when we uh, fled. So uh, we have to ration our, our, our meal and uh, save our food. Uh, but luckily, uh, when we get to, to the Philippines, we were well received by the U.S. Navy. On the day we left, it was the last day, uh, the day that Saigon fell. Uh, 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 so, uh, my father, he was in the uh, Navy, in the Coast Guard, so uh, he, knew, he knew exactly what's coming ahead, so yeah, he was well prepared. With some of his friends, he say, if this day is going to come, we'll meet up here. And that's what uh, happened. So, on the day that uh, we know it's going to be the last day already, so we all, he drove us to uh, a boat where uh, uh, it was dark uh, at the port of uh, Saigon. So we all uh, met up, uh, he, he drove us to the port and ev everybody got on board of a small uh, boat and with all the families that I didn't know who they were uh, until we became friends during our trip. But we, uh, we all uh, got on the boat and we we didn't sell yet because uh, he had to uh, wait for some orders. But uh, until I believe very early, like about nine or 10 o'clock in the morning, as I was standing on the boat looking at the direction where the, uh, uh, what you call the, uh, the airport is, I saw some uh, plants falling from the sky, just like in the movies, you know. Uh, they got hit and they fall from uh, they fell from the sky, uh, so it was a very chaotic uh, moment, and you can hear rockets flying over your head. You can hear uh, all the shootings around you, and it was very chaotic. So uh, I guess they uh, have the order, so we set sail and, and and we got out. Uh, we got out once we got out of the. Uh, uh, waterways, the Vietnam waterways, when we get out, we met with the uh, uh, U.S. Uh, 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 Navy um, right at the port of Vietnam, right outside of the port of Vietnam. So uh, they asked us if we want to come on board so they can take us to a safer place. Uh, all of us say, no, we wanted to go to Australia. <laughs> and uh, But somehow during the journey, they decide to go around and go back to the Philippines where we end up here in the U.S. Um, can you describe the scene uh, before um, your father gathered everyone and drove you to the designated area? Can you describe the scene in Saigon then? Yes, when we were, were driving, we, there was a lot of shootings around us and behind us and bombs exploding uh, in Saigon. So. Uh, it was a very scary moment for us, but he had to uh, go to different ways of avoiding those uh, those uh, hot spots, those hot areas. So, and finally, we got to uh, to the port of Saigon where the boat was, and and we all got on board. Um, is there anything uh, or, or any experience in particular that you remember? Uh, during um, the the trip your from your home to the boat that you remember? Uh, it, it's like I said, there were shootings uh, all around us, bomb exploding, uh, but we were able, I mean, of course he was uh, driving us in a military uh, vehicle, so uh, nobody will, uh, nobody stop us, so we were able to to drive uh, very quick and very safely to to the port. Um, when you and your family started a new life in in Lubbock, Texas, right. um, 
other than the the clothes on your back and the language barrier, uh, did you and your family face other challenges? Uh, it was hard because uh, uh, this is a new life to us, a new culture. Uh, uh, we have to get to know new people, and uh, we didn't know where to get help at all, so uh, we had to start everything from scratch, uh, try to get things done, and try to earn our living. So it was hard. Um, you said that you have to uh, work and to help out your family. Um, almost immediately as you came to the U.S. Um, and also Lubbock is a very, very small town. Yes, it is. Um, did you feel the welcome? Did you, uh, is there any challenge or anything? You know, we, are, we were very blessed because uh, the church in Lubbock, the first United Methodist Church in Lubbock sponsored our family and they took care of us real well. Uh, and we we're very fortunate and very blessed to, to, to have them, uh, to that, to have the help. And until now, 37 years later, we're still communicating with the members of the church and uh, still have a strong tie with the church t uh, as of today. Um, I'm going back to the boat okay. um, and your journey. Um, how big was that boat? Can you estimate? It was not a big boat. <laughs> to me, it was a very small boat. But uh, uh, but I I believe because my father and uh, some of his uh, friends or some of his colleagues have already prepared for the trip, so they were very well organized. So uh, it was a smooth journey for us. Uh, to me, besides the the rough sea, it, it was not that rough, but. Uh, the, the whole trip, uh, kind of, uh, I felt safe. I felt safe during the trip. So uh, I know that somebody else had uh, not, who were not that lucky and uh, had to uh, go through all kind of uh, troubles and all kind of uh, tough uh, uh, conditions when they escaped. But, uh, we were very fortunate. Um, can you tell us uh, how young uh, and how old were the people who were in that, that little boat with you and your family? Mo mostly our families, and they have children about my age, uh, or some are younger, uh, but mo most of us, uh, I mean just families, families uh, fleeing together. So is uh, your, your whole big family together? Right, uh, with different family. families, yeah. right. So. so you may have children as young as a year old? Uh, I don't recall, but you know, uh, families, we don't have enough room, enough places to sleep, so we have to sleep on the floor of, of the boat. Uh, you know, we divide it into different sections for different families. So, yeah, but, but we manage, we manage, and we, 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 we pull through. So you don't get to see everyone uh, with that boat because it's divided into sections, and since it's no, so we 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 uh, we became friends. You know, we we talk to one another, and and uh, apparently, I believe that uh, my father knew some of them, and some of them knew our family. So it was it was uh, it was nice. How old is the old? Was the oldest uh, on that ship? Doing your journey? Uh, I believe uh, four or 50. I believe the oldest was 50, and the youngest, I believe, was about six or seven. Okay. Mm -hmm. so. um, is there anything else you want to share about the journey to, from Vietnam to the uh, Subic Bay? I to believe it, it, it was a quite experience for me. It gave me the uh, uh, it gave me the strength to survive, and it uh, it gave me the sense of responsibility, because uh, uh, I I know that uh, once we left Vietnam, we don't have anything with us anymore. So 
and you have to be strong to survive. So it gave me the strength in in life to uh, uh, to make everything happen. Well, I I believe that uh, you know uh, our children uh, they were born here, uh, and they don't they didn't go through what we went through. They they didn't know about the war. They didn't expose themselves to the war. They don't know how to uh, be uh, sleeping at night to be on guard all the time, making sure that you're always ready to uh, to go to the shelter when you hear the the sound of the rocket flying over your head. So uh, they didn't have the experience. So, uh, but it's I believe it's. It, it is the parents, uh, us, uh, who now have the responsibility to share those stories uh, with them and making sure that uh, they appreciate what they have here and make make sure that they don't, they're not taking things for granted. So it's, it's our responsibility to share it with them. And, uh, you know, always, uh, it doesn't matter who you are, but you should have a strong work ethic and uh, uh, and also you you make sure that uh, you don't go out there and ask for food. You have to do it yourself and, uh, and support your family. Um, and I know you said that um, after you help your family, your dad said now that you're able, the family is able for you to go back to school. Um, at what age was that? And, and um, why it was that politics? It was like a twenty. Uh, when I went back to school, it was like a three years later, and uh, you know, it, it's just uh, during time, uh, uh, right after my, uh, uh, right after I graduated from college, uh, a few years later, I opened up my own business, and from my business, I was able to succeed, and and I have different business, and was able to. Uh, uh, to support my family. Uh, uh, financially, we were uh, stable, so um, uh, I, I decided, it's, and my, my children were grown by that time already, so I decided to, it's time for me to get involved and to give back, so that's why I decided to run. So with your wife uh, supporting uh, what you do, um, and you said that you have uh, other businesses to support uh, your family. I understand that being a representative, uh, you don't get paid very much. No. How does your family um, feel about it? No, I'm, I'm, I'm very fortunate to have uh, a family that's uh, supporting uh, everything that I'm doing. So when I decide to do something, I always have the blessing and uh, and the support from the family before I do it. So I'm very fortunate to have a, a family who's always behind me that really allow me uh, to, to devote my time to give back, so. Um, you travel a lot as a representative. Yes, I um, do. Does that affect your family, your wife and children? No, at least, but uh, you have your duties as a, a, a state representative, but also so, you have your duties for the family also, so I'm trying to balance those two and uh, make sure that uh, uh, the family is always uh, 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 something that I, I will have to go back to all the time. So uh, family always come first, and then with that, uh, uh, family support for me to have the time to, to serve also, so I'm very blessed. Um, since it is your fifth term, you must love what you do as a state representative, like you said, give back to the community uh, because they have, uh, the community have given you so much since you first came here. Um, what do you have to share uh, with the younger generation um, in terms of uh, your work? Um, and in terms of, you know, just how to be? Well, uh, the way I raised my uh, children, I uh, 
uh, I always uh, uh, have a dialogue, a, a conversation with my children. It doesn't matter how busy I am, but I always find time to make time to talk to them at least once a week. Uh, talk to them at least about half an hour. Talk to them about uh, who I am, where I come from, who my parents uh, are. So let, make sure that they understand where they come from and uh, tell them about the fact of life, not, nothing more, and why I choose uh, to go into this profession uh, and uh, let them know that I, I, I've always worked hard, uh, uh, that I, I don't go out there and beg for food. I always have to work and uh, make sure they understand the values in life and uh, what, what I'm expecting from them and let them make their own decision. Uh, I believe that, and my vision for my kids, I always share with them that, you know, uh, in life you want to pursue whatever you, uh, you like, but you have to understand that uh, uh, you have to uh, make sure to uh, make a certain uh, basic achievement in life uh, for yourself, for your family, and make sure that uh, uh, your happiness is your family and make sure that you be able to support and provide for your family. That's very important before you decided to go out and help other people. So uh, within the family structure, it has to uh, be in place uh, before you come out and, and be a public servant. Exactly. I would encourage everybody, not only my family, but everybody, you should have the, uh, uh, st the stability uh, within the family first uh, in terms of uh, parents, uh, children, and the financial stability also before you uh, decide to go out and uh, uh, involved with the community, helping with the community, because you need to have those basic things for the family, the basic needs for the family first. Fulfill the basic needs for the family first before you uh, you go out and help other people. So would you encourage our younger generation to follow your footsteps? Uh, I, those are my experiences I want to share with them, but let them make their own decision. They might have some other better ideas, who, who knows, but uh, those are my life experiences and what I went through, and, uh, and I, I see those things uh, were working for me, and I just want to pass it on because there's no shortcut at all. In life, there's no shortcut. You have to work hard. You always have to work hard. Work, work hard and work smart. Uh, you always have to have the ambition. Uh, but, uh, uh, but when you have your ambition, you need to, to make sure those, uh, you don't be over ambitious uh, to, to reach out to your goal. So set a goal that is reachable for you, uh, whatever you can do, and just do it. want people to remember you? Uh, it's not so much about how people uh, want to remember me, but I want all in my life, uh, I was saying with my friends also and with my family also, I say I don't want to be in the position when I get older and I look uh, back at, at, at the, the things that I have done in the past and I don't want to say to myself or to other people that I wish I could have done that. Uh, I don't want to say that because uh, now you have to do all your best today. So when you get older uh, and you cannot uh, uh, physically uh, perform anymore, then you don't have to regret uh, your time at all. So I don't want to be in the position, like I say, I, I don't want to say, oh, I wish I could have done those things in the past, you know. So, but uh, my, my uh, philosophy is you always have to do your best today. And with that, would, uh, would I be remembering you as our state rep 
representative? Mm. Or would I be remember you as a businessman? I would say that uh, I, I would like to be part of uh, the community who always uh, work together with the community and giving back to this country. And, uh, and uh, I just, uh, I, I, I don't have the ambition of uh, calling myself, I mean, having people, I mean, uh, looking at me and saying, wow, he's a state representative. No, he doesn't make, of course I'm a state representative. I'm proud of that, but, but you know, I, I want to be seen within the community within the uh, the district that I represent, people from the district that I represent, that uh, uh, well, he he he's he, he's one of us. I'm proud to be an American, but with that, I would say that uh, I'm also proud to have the uh, culture and the uh, Vietnamese heritage uh, to uh, contribute uh, to this uh, broader society and uh, share that culture and that heritage uh, with other communities and work together for the better of this great nation. So. so you are an American? I'm an American, but I'm also proud of my heritage. I'm proud to be an American, and I'm very proud of my heritage. You know, being a state representative is uh, such an honor and a privilege. Uh, you know, being a state representative here for the state of Texas, uh, you don't get paid much at all. Uh, uh, you have to have your own source of income to support uh, your family. But I'm very fortunate to have uh, a family who really uh, allows me to uh, uh, devote my time to serve uh, for the people, to give back to this uh, great country. Uh, and. Uh, but I always see that uh, family always come first. Uh, it doesn't matter how busy I am. Uh, I uh, we have to juggle on my time for family also. Uh, family uh, structure is very important. Uh, uh, when it comes to very special occasions like birthdays uh, of my children, uh, of my spouse or spending time together with them uh, uh, at different occasions, I would do so. I would make time to be with them. Also, I will make time to uh, spend time with my children, educating them, uh, taking out. Uh, at least I have a very uh, special day every week to spend time with my family, uh, going to the movie with, uh, movies with them. Uh, uh, going out to, to dinner with them, so uh, it doesn't matter how busy I am, it, it has to be, family has to be a priority. And can you share with us, uh, since um, you said that you have businesses, um, who takes care of that when you're in uh, uh, Austin uh, serving us? Uh, when I'm uh, uh, when I'm in session, uh, when I'm in Austin or uh, 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 doing some uh, state business, uh, when I have to travel, then uh, uh, I'm very fortunate to have my wife to take care of the business. Uh, whatever uh, we, we do, uh, uh, we share our work, and if I'm not there, then. Uh, uh, that somebody else, my wife and somebody else will help uh, run the business. Uh, and I'm very fortunate to have another partner that, that really uh, work together with me and supporting me. So your wife uh, is a great help uh, for you uh, so that you can fulfill uh, your cause, your dream. Yes, of course. Uh, we met in college. Uh, uh, I met her uh, in college, and uh, you know, during my college years, I remember uh, my father uh, always said to me, uh, Hubert, uh, I don't want you to have any girlfriend until you get out of college. And, uh, but you know, somehow I met a very uh, uh, beautiful uh, young girl in college, and now she's uh, my wife. 
And uh, after we graduated from college, uh, we always uh, worked together uh, for quite some time. Now we always worked together at our business. Uh, and she's very supportive and uh, uh, of the business and of, of myself. Can you share with us your family? Um, uh, we uh, uh, we have three kids, one boy and two daughters, uh, and uh, uh, they all go to college. Uh, I have a son who finished uh, medical school, and now he's uh, further his education. A daughter who's in medical school, she's about to go to internship uh, soon. And I have another daughter who's starting college also. So uh, I'm very glad that uh, uh, I, don't, I didn't have to, uh, to, uh, to have, uh, spend much time to educate them. They, uh, they just uh, decided on their own to choose a career and uh, to be where they want to be in life. Uh, and I'm very fortunate. When I uh, raise my kids, I always, uh, my goal is to make sure that they understand what does it take in life uh, uh, to be where they want to be. So I uh, always spend time talking to them. Uh, no matter how busy I am, I always spend at least half an hour every week talking uh, to my children. Uh, yeah, I talk to them about different things in life, uh, where I came from, who my parents are, uh, what did I do in life, uh, why did I end up uh, having this kind of job or, or doing certain things. So uh, uh, I just want just for them to understand the facts of life and uh, life doesn't come easy. You always have to try your best. And when I sit, when they come to a certain age, when they're in high school, I always uh, talk to them, uh, letting them know that uh, you don't pursue your own dream. Just don't follow my dream. But I just want to make sure when you pursue your dream, you need to understand a few things for me. First is the profession that you're going to choose. Make sure that profession is going to be able to support you. Uh, is be able to provide you something for you to support yourself and your family and make sure that those professions, I know there's a cycle of everything in life when it comes to uh, careers also. So in career lasts maybe 10 years, 15 years, but choose a career that, that will last you a long time, that will, uh, you don't have to worry of, uh, of being laid off, uh, a, a, a career that, uh, that you'll be able to sustain uh, a long time, for a long time and that uh, for you to be happy and for your family to be happy. So that's the career that I want you to think real hard and to pursue it. If you need help in terms of if you're, uh, when it comes to education, if you're weak at some point, uh, a certain uh, area, please uh, let us know so we can get help for you. Uh, but uh, just want to make sure that uh, things in life doesn't come easy. You always have to try uh, your best and at your hardest and work at your hardest. Um, I know that uh, with the second generation um, or children uh, who uh, have all the privileges uh, from their parents, they have uh, no experience as to the hardship of your journey and your start over in the U.S. Um, how did you instill in them that the, they chose the career that they chose? Do you have any problems when they're growing up? Uh, you being more Vietnamese and your children being more Americanized? Uh, you know, of course, when the children are growing up, uh, they were born here, they were raised here. Uh, even uh, we're proud of the uh, Vietnamese heritage and the Vietnamese culture. We also want them to understand uh, somewhat about the Vietnamese culture and the Vietnamese uh, heritage, but let them have a freedom to make their own decision. Uh, and it's very, 
uh, it's a helpful thing for them to be raised in two different cultures so they can understand one and compare with the other and, and just get the best out of it. Uh, uh, so I, I, I think that let, let your children decide, but you know, uh, when your children are grown, uh, sometimes you don't want them to make the same mistakes uh, or going through the same struggle that you went through. So you have to share those experiences with them and just let them know, guide them uh, gently, uh, telling them that uh, this is the pathway that we went through and this is a very a struggling pathway or it's a very difficult pathway so uh, here's there's another option for you to go and just lay out everything on the table and let them see it let them make their own decision and uh, so you don't have any conflict between uh, being two Vietnamese or being two American with your children no I don't have that conflict I'm very open to my uh, to my uh, children, I always have, uh, I always have communication with my children. I'm, uh, they listen to me. I listen to them. Sometimes we don't come uh, to a, a same uh, goal, but you know we listen to uh, one another and we compromise. Uh, I treat my children just like uh, I'm talking to, uh, giving uh, an advice to a friend, and make sure if. Uh, uh, if 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 I, I we want to see a friend, our children to be successful, our friend to be successful, so we'll always compromise. That time that some of my kids uh, want to go uh, out of Houston to study in college, but I tell them the uh, uh, advantages and disadvantages of being away from the family, and tell them, give them the reason why. This choice is better than the other choice, so let them decide. And uh, and because sometimes uh, uh, they they didn't uh, they didn't see those struggles ahead of them. They didn't have the experiences uh, that we went through, so they didn't see those struggles ahead of them. So you you have to lay it out on the table. Let let them decide. Um, you're very lucky to have a beautiful uh, family as well as some great children. Well, thank you. Um, what can you uh, tell the parents who are not that so lucky? I, I, uh, the way I, uh, every family has different uh, circumstances, different, uh, how would I put it, uh, but different family have different uh, ways of raising their children, but I believe that op uh, having conversation with your children is a must. You have to raise them uh, when they're starting uh, uh, the, the very elementary years. Uh, you have to spend time with them, and I always, either myself or my wife, spend time with the kid every day, every single day. And I'm very lucky that uh, my wife, uh, she was able to uh, spend at least half an hour with my kid every day, you know, go over with them, uh, things in school, uh, teaching them, uh, making sure to guide, guide them through the schools, through uh, all, all the, uh, the years in school. Uh, I believe that uh, uh, We spend at least uh, half an hour with them until they reach to high school. And that's uh, when they go to, uh, when, when, they go, when they're in high school, we kind of step back and let them start, let them, making, let them make their own decision uh, and give them a choice. During the high school years, we, uh, uh, we give them a choice and make sure we uh, spending time with your children is very important. And make sure you stay focused with your children. Make sure they they well rounded. Make sure they involved not only for education, but make sure they involved with the community also. They do some volunteering work, 
uh, make sure that they uh, not only education but they have to go out there and be physically fit also so that's 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 very important for the children do you have for the younger generation uh, when they live in a family uh, with parents are Vietnamese and they are an American? What advice do you have for them in order to merge and to understand their parents? I, I know that there are some families uh, uh, that the parents don't speak English or doesn't expose themselves can uh, uh, adapt themselves to to the American uh, society yet and the kids are going to school and they have friends they they usually don't agree with uh, what the parents are uh, thinking so that's a challenge but uh, I would encourage uh, those parents who are uh, who has a language barrier I just try to get help uh, uh, um, uh, the Vietnamese American community is, is a uh, is a well established community. You know, we can get a lot of help from different organizations within the com community, who can understand the needs of certain families, who can help with the kids, tutoring the kids or giving help to the kids also. And but you know, never I I would encourage the parents not to. Uh, just get distracted or get frustrated when they uh, they don't have a com they can't have a communication with their children. You know, be very persistent. Get help if you can't communicate with your children. Get help. Get some professional help, and uh, and hopefully uh, your children will come back. For the children, I, I would say that your parents are always right. Uh, your parents always love you, uh, so just listen to them. Uh, it doesn't mean that you have to agree with them, but listen to them. You know, uh, but uh, in life you need to, like I said, uh, with my children, I say that uh, there's no easy thing coming uh, for you in life. So you always have to set your goal, work hard at it, and reach your goal. Uh, and I always tell, hey. Go out there and make a lot of money first. Make a lot of money. And once you have money, uh, then you can do some uh, other things in life too. To me, I don't see there's a need, a, a rush to educate your children uh, with your own origin or your own heritage or culture. Uh, let them grow up. Let them grow up and adapt to society with uh, another culture. There's nothing wrong with that. But uh, someday they will come back. Someday they, they see some, some amazing things within the community, within the, uh, the heritage, within the community where, where their parents come from, where they come from. Uh, they will uh, see a sense of uh, pride uh, of uh, who they are. So they will come back, trust me, they will come back. And I've seen a lot of uh, uh, children coming from those families. Uh, uh, now they're coming back and helping with, with, with the community. Even they, they are young professionals now, they're doctors, uh, lawyers, and even uh, uh, plumbers or uh, welders. Uh, they see, uh, when they grow up, they realize uh, and they see different things. They, they, they come back and they start learning uh, to speak Vietnamese and to write Vietnamese now. Even they, they, they're very well established in the community now.